Yeah. Everybody take three steps forward. Come on, y'all. Act like you mean it. Right? I mean it. All right. So, uh, my name is Scott Crow. I'm a long-term anarchist community organizer. Uh, I've been living in Austin for about 12 years. I've been organizing off and on for about 25 years. Um, and uh, I uh, have done all kinds of things, environmental work, uh, poverty issues, animal rights and stuff. And I've been targeted by the FBI, the NSA, and the Joint Terrorism Task Force for since at least 1999 to about 2008 that we know for sure. Now, when I say targeted... You have to understand that they did everything that you could imagine. Uh, grand jury subpoenas. Uh, I was investigated in 13 field offices by the FBI in nine states. Um, I was. Uh, they went through my trash. They tapped my telephone. They tapped my uh, my interwebs. Um, they did everything you could think of. All my known relations were were put on the list. I could not fly for five years. Um, and going through all of this, I knew it was happening at the time, but I couldn't do anything about it because I wasn't charged with a crime. At least, if I had been charged with a crime, I could have, I could have lawyered up and gotten people out, uh, gotten lawyers to really defend this stuff in court. But really what it was was a whisper campaign. And APD and the Texas State uh, Troopers that are on this property were part of that. The UT police were part of it. And it wasn't a vast conspiracy. It wasn't gang stalking. This was targeted for political dissent. And I want to be clear about that, because it wasn't like I was, it was some vague actions that I did. I was an animal rights and an environmental activist for a long time, being an anarchist. So I won the lottery, pulled the cord, and I got three of the top four things in the war on terror. And I want to talk about the war on terror, really, because the war on terror is a war on us. And I want people to know that. And it's not just us as white people in this country. It's not just wealthy people in this country, but mostly marginalized communities in this country, people of Middle Eastern descent, people of Eastern Europe descent, people of Muslim faith are the people who are, who are bearing the brunt of this. You know what? I mean, they're taking information from us, but so is Google, so is Twitter, so is Apple. And those people are taking way more information than the NSA is, t is taking. But the people who are bearing the brunt of this, who are having their doors kicked in, who are being set up by the government over and over again, largely are Muslim people and people of Middle Eastern descent. And I think that we need to keep that in our mind and thinking about that. The reason I'm standing here today is because I'm a white, loudmouth male, and I made the FBI look stupid. And they couldn't put me in prison. And, and I want to tell you, I have a lot of friends who have gone to prison. Muslim friends of mine went to prison, and other friends of mine went to prison. And, they were tar and it's definitely targeted. And the wider surveillance is bullshit. It does not stop crime. Did it stop Boston? No. And what did they do around September 11, 2001, when the, when, the, when the FBI brought their own people in, when Colleen Riley brought these people to the attention? Did it stop it then? No, it did not stop it then. So we cannot give up our rights in doing these things because of surveillance. Do not be afraid. And I want to tell you, in New Orleans, after Hurricane Katrina, when I co-founded an organization, the police literally, in Homeland Security, tried to kill me. Not figuratively, laid down, face down on the ground, numerous times with the guns in my head, but they told me to blow, blow my damn brains out. That kind of stuff. So when I came out of New Orleans and all the surveillance stuff started coming to the surface, I had to ask myself, what are the two worst things that could ever happen to any of us? They can either kill us or they can put us in prison. And if I'm not afraid of any of those, and I hope that ne neither of you are afraid of those generally, uh, that we will fight for this because we cannot give up our rights. And I don't mean constitutional rights. I mean our rights as humans on this planet to make decisions and determine our own futures for collective liberation. I don't need a piece of paper written by a bunch of old dead white guys to tell me or not. Sure, it's something that helps us along the way, but we have our rights and I would fight for those anyway, no matter how repressive a regime we have in, in office. And I hope that you would too. And if you won't, I hope that you will support people who will do that also. It is not. In Egypt, they don't have the constitution and people are standing up for their own rights. Constitution. You have your right to talk. But I can tell you that the Constitution didn't stand between me and, and, and the bullets. The Constitution didn't stand between me and the prison system. The, the, court, the court system, it didn't protect me. And you can disagree all that you want. And, and, and I think that if people want to restore the fourth, I think that's an important thing to do. I love this. You're selling people, my man. What do you think about Alex Jones? Constitution. 
So anyway, we as conscious people in this country need to, to, to continue to take a stand. We need to protect the freedom fighters who have let information out, like Bradley Manning, like Edward Snowden, like Jeremy Hammond. All of these people who have released information, not just from the government, but from the multinational corporations who have also collected all this information on us and are selling it and are using it against us, that we need to continue to stand up. It's important for you all to stand here today. It's important for you to tell your sisters, your brothers, to tell everybody about it. And it's important for you not to think that people are asleep because everybody knows shit's bad. It's just that they... they go, Guys, this is great. Guys, the Second Amendment are the only things protecting your freedom. Is this guy working for the government? Yeah. Is this a provocateur? Yes. If you're a concerned citizen, you would stand down, my man. Hey, well, you were yelling at him when he was talking. I wasn't yelling at him. You don't like Alex Jones. I don't like Alex Jones. And I'll, I'll stand up and say that. Listen, there, uh, there, there's real conspiracies we have to deal with. There were, people are plotting. We don't need to worry about crazy conspiracies with lizard people and all these things. There's a conspiracy called the prison industrial complex that we need to fight because they're putting, they're putting our sisters and brothers in prison. There's a conspiracy of the NSA. There's a, ser there's a conspiracy of prison. These are outright real conspiracies that we need to deal with. We don't need to worry about... Uh, uh, clandestine weird things that, that may or may not be happening. It takes us away from the root of the real thing. But really, I want, to re I want everybody to remember why they're here today, to restore the fourth, right? And if that's what you want to work on, I think it's important for you to do that because it takes all of us to make social change in this country. If we really want collective liberation, we have to work on all the fronts to do that. The future is wide open. There's a lot of people here. There's a lot of people that are not here that, that really care about this stuff. So how's it going to look, everybody? Thank you so much. Well, that got interesting. Um, I thought everybody was on the same side here. I don't, I don't understand exactly what's happening. I thought we were all about privacy and... and um, freedom from warrantless searches and everything. I guess some folks think of it differently. Um, and that's okay. We will be having some, um, some discussion.